Welcome to Magic the Budgeting, where we learn how to play magic without breaking the bank. This video is a guide on completing the black deck color challenge in Magic the Gathering Arena. If you're a first time player, you can find the color challenges here and next to your XP rewards. You'll uh, have to complete these to play, uh, to play ranked PvP anyways, and you'll get a bunch of rewards along the way for doing so. So we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, if for any reason you're coming back and playing this uh, color challenge after being a beginner, you can also access it here from the Learn More tab. Come down to Master the Color Challenge, and it will drop you in. Here we are, we've got all the decks over to the right, and right now we are working on Liliana. It will start you at the beginning, facing Vivian, the green deck. And this is going to show you how to use uh, a bunch of black deck specific combinations. So, let's get started. Alright, here we go. We go first, we drop a swamp, and get our typhoid rats down. This creature has Death Touch ability, which means any amount of damage, so if it enters combat with another creature, even if this dies, if it does any damage, the opposing creature will also die. Uh, drop another Swamp, and we'll get our uh, Malakure Cold Blade down. Whenever an opponent creature dies, uh, this creature is going to gain plus one, plus one counter, so it'll upgrade to a 2-2, two -two, then a 3-3, three -three, etc. Okay, we'll get another swamp down. Before we do that, before we do that, let's make sure we get the second one down. This is gonna cost two mana. Okay. Going a little too fast. Now we can drop our compound fracture. Target creature gets minus one, minus one. Right, and if a creature drops to zero toughness, it will actually uh, be sent to the graveyard. So let's go ahead and drop compound fracture on this mystic which will bring it to zero, 0 and therefore destroy it. Both of our Cold Blades will uh, upgrade from that, and we can have our two creatures without summoning Sickness attack this turn. Up next, we're kind of doing the same thing, right? So we're just getting the hang of destroying creatures to buff our Cold Blades and make them stronger. So we'll drop our Swamp. This is just... Um, Rinse and repeat. Cold blades get stronger. Everything attacks. And we're zipping through the first black deck color challenge. Okay, here we are. Drop our swamp. Now, unfortunately, we don't have anything to destroy the mystic this time. But if it blocks any attacks, uh, she will lose the mystic. does, and that is fine. Another upgrade. And these are really just getting out of control. All we have to do is attack with the Cold Blades. GG. Okay, first challenge complete. That one's pretty easy. On to the second challenge. We're facing uh, the white deck, Ajani. All right, so key card here is the Sanitarium Skeleton. You can return it from the graveyard to your hand, which gives you great value. Let's drop our Swamp, get the Skeleton on the board. Now the card we're going to combo this with is the Savage Gorger. Beginning of your end step, if your opponent lost any life, you put a plus one, plus one counter on the Savage Gorger. Okay, we're going to drop our second Swamp. And we really have nothing else to do here, right? There's nothing on the board. We'll just go ahead and attack with our skeleton. Now, these are instants. We could play them, but again, nothing to use them on. So, just carrying on. And we'll end our turn. So, here is where things get a little interesting. Now, we've got a creature on the board. We have instants in our hand and leftover mana, right? And this is important when you're playing uh, standard games as well. Sometimes you want to leave up mana, or it's good to have mana left up, when you have instants or flash cards that you can play in your hand. We can play it on their turn. Destroy the target creature, leaving us with an open field. And you'll see when we get to our turn why that's so important. 
Now we drop our swamp. Summon the Gorger. Remember, we have to deal damage. If that Shrine Keeper with 2-2 two -two is on the board, it could be used to block the Skeleton, and we would not get any damage onto our opponent player because the Shrine Creeper would have blocked it. With this off the field, because we casted our instant, now we can get one damage, which is all we need to buff our Savage Gorger. Okay. Swamp. Now we have four lands. We've got plenty to get another Skeleton on the board. So now we have the issue where if we attack with the Savage Gorger, he could choose to trade by blocking with the uh, Impassioned Orator here. But we do have Compound Fracture, making it minus one, minus one, right? So that'll drop to a one, one, allowing us to destroy it. And even if he blocks a Skeleton, which seems a little silly because we can just get those back, um, it's still going to destroy the... Orator and the Gorger will get through. So, here's what we can do. Let's go ahead and attack. And since this is an instant, we can play it after our opponent has assigned blockers. Okay, he's chosen to destroy the skeleton because it will leave the Orator on the board. But we can reduce that. And now our skeleton will trade with the Orator. Gorger gets damage in. And so at the end of the turn, gets that buff again. Very good. Now we're really off to the races because Gorger can destroy this and even if he chooses to block one of these, we still get damage in. So now, everything can just attack. You can always get these skeletons back if he happens to destroy them. That way we can sneak in a little bit of extra damage. And look, we have so much mana, there's no reason not to do this at the end of our turn or during the second main phase. Drop it out so we've got it back on the field for uh, blocking. Now we could block here, but we have so much life and we're in such a strong position, I'm going to take that damage. No reason to lose our skeleton again quite yet. Alright. Drop another swamp. Now compound fracture gets stronger for each one in our graveyard. We have one there, so this will actually uh, subtract two from each stat. So this Hallowed Priest is a little scary, but we can actually take care of that no problem. So let's go ahead and we will destroy the Priest, because that can get out of control if a lot of healing is going on. Oratory is tapped, we'll just attack everything to the face, and this Gorger is just getting too strong, too out of control for uh, Ajani here to really do anything about it. Even though we've got another priest, which can keep buffing over and over and over again. It's just not going to be enough to keep up. We're so far ahead. And look at this. We've got another gorger. So, keep attacking with everything, and as long as damage goes through, both of these are going to buff now. Serious problem. We've got so much mana. We can keep the skeleton on the field. Always keep threatening that one damage. And we do not have to block here. We can take all of that damage. And game is over. Both creatures are tapped. He's got nothing to block with. We get the win. Longer game, because we have to wait for these gorgers to kind of ramp up. But you can see they get very, very difficult to take down. Okay, that is the second one down. Now we move on to challenging Chandra and the red deck. So we keep the previous combos in mind. Lots of ways to remove creatures, lots of ways to uh, buff those creatures that uh, grow from other creatures being destroyed. Get our little skeleton on the field. We've already got two compound fractures in hand. And this is... Oh, just a 2-2-2. Two, two, two. Nothing special there. So we can keep hold of the board by attacking and playing this compound fracture. So let's attack. She'll assign the defender thinking it's going to win. 
Right, because it looks like it would win. Looks like a dumb play on my part. But we can drop that to a 1-1. One, one. Skeleton wins. We have maintained control of the field. And our next compound fracture will be stronger. Strong enough, even, for the Spellgorger weird. And let's see what we draw. Okay, so, unlikely aid. Target creature can get plus two, zero. Gains indestructible. So we have two options, really. Could either use the compound fracture, or use the unlikely aid. Either way, we should be able to defeat this weird. Right, they're both instants I can play it while I'm attacking. Just have to decide which one we want to use. This will be really good for a creature later on. Let's go ahead and drop our instant here, just to clear the field. And if we get another compound fracture later on, now it's 3-3. Three, three. All right, we've got another swamp. We've got our opportunist, which, you know, we'll see if we even get far, far enough to make use of that ability. Uh, but once again here, we can uh, use unlikely aid on our skeleton this time to accomplish the same thing we did on our last turn. Make the attack, she'll assign the blocker, Oh no, it looks like we're going to lose, but at the last moment, let's go ahead and buff this. And we're just keeping control of the field with all of these buffing spells. Okay, now we have an op- uh, we don't have an option. <laughs> Nightmare is still a little out of reach, right? We need six swamps in order to uh, play this. But we've got a 2-3 creature, we've got our unlikely aid. Uh, that we can cast from our hand once again, so we just keep rinsing and repeating. Both can attack. Whoever she blocks will be strong enough with the indestructible uh, to take out this creature. That's the better trade. That's a smart play, but here's our unlikely aid coming through. Boom. All right. And we have managed to keep everything off of the field, and here is our nightmare. Flying 6-6 six, six, uh, with the six swamps that we have on the field. Okay, she's really running out of cards, and I mean, we're also running out of cards, we have nothing left. But, we have enough here uh, that we should have control to win this game pretty handily. Oh, another swamp. Our nightmare gets stronger. Push through for another attack. This is so hard to block because it's got flying. She's really got to come up with a flyer or something with reach. She probably doesn't have in that deck. Let's go ahead and activate this ability just to get it back in our hand since we have a ton of extra mana. Perfect. And we don't even need it, but let's play him at an additional cost. Discard a card. Click submit. There we go. I can click things. I can even bring that back to my hand if I want, but all of this is, it doesn't really matter because the Nightmare is strong enough. It will just win this turn. Easy enough. That's three challenges down. And one more to go. Technically two more if you include the human opponent. All right. Now it's time to see how Jace and the blue deck hold up. Alright, so here we are, Swamp and Typhoid Rat on turn one. Jace is going to have a bunch of flyers, which is going to be uh, an extra layer of difficulty we're going to have to deal with here. Can't block that. Turn two, we'll get our coal blade down. We remember this from a couple challenges ago, right? When a creature, uh, an opponent creature dies, we get a 1-1 counter on this. We're going to attack if he chooses to block. 
But she does. Uh, we get rid of a pretty big creature, and Cold Brain uh, begins to get stronger. Ah, uh, Warden. Good card. So now we still have an issue. But, look at this. Third swamp goes down. Murder. Destroy target creature. We can use that on the Warden. This is a big value card because it's going to make all of his flyers easier to cast. It's also the only thing right now strong enough to block the Cold Blade. This gets a buff from that as well. All of these compounding effects. And we get our three damage in. Now, it could be worth leaving him to block if these weren't all flyers in such a flyer-heavy deck. But, uh, we're in good shape, so drop our fourth swamp. Now we have two options here. We can use the Outrider by discarding a card. Right, and that's pretty strong. That's a 3-5-5, five, five, which is, uh, crazy strong. And when the Skeleton Archer here enters the battlefield, uh, deals one damage to any target. And you know what? That's pretty nice, because we can destroy a flying 2-1 that costs three mana to play with that one damage. So let's go ahead and do that, as it immediately continues to buff our Cold Blade, as another creature dies. And this Cold Blade is getting really difficult to deal with, as it's up to 4-4 four, four now. Alright, so now we've got some more options. Alright, so with this turn, although this is a great creature, I am trying to get more things on the board more quickly. So with a Swamp, we can get the Outrider on the board by discarding the Vampire. And in the same turn, we have two Swamps left over, allowing us to equip Eternal Thirst... Uh, and really, we can put this on any creature. It's going to give it lifelink. And, uh, whenever a creature opponent dies, put a 1-1 one, one counter on this creature. Outrider can't attack this turn. Skeleton Archer can. So we want to get this moving as quickly as possible. If he chooses to block, creatures are going to die. There we go. And even though we lose the flyer, we should be in a strong enough position here uh, to destroy all of their creatures while getting our attacks through. We get another Eternal Thirst. Hmm, let's see. Is there anything strong enough here? Yeah, we're good. Okay, even if we lose the one creature, um... Both things are going to buff. Look at that, two six sixes, one with lifelink. Ah, this is an annoying little uh, addition, but that's okay. It still can't handle the six six. So while compound fracture looks very good, and we could get this to seven seven. We are going to want an additional attacking creature on the field. Right, he's only got one blocker he could use, and he can't take this much damage. He has to block. This continues to grow. 7-7. Seven, seven. Alright, either one of our creatures can take him out. Let's just go ahead and assign the attacks. Even if he blocks one, you know, we have more than enough damage here. Ooh, tricky. Alright, so even with that setback, we do have the Soul Hunter. We can drop this on the field. When it enters the battlefield, if cast from your hand, it deals one damage to target opponent for each swamp you control, which is five. And he's only got four life left. And that's the game. Now, 
as you can see, there were a couple of mishaps there. There's actually multiple ways to play that out, but as long as you get the start down correctly, uh, you can finish it in several different paths. There we go. So that's all of the AI opponents. Uh, of course, the only thing left is to play a human opponent. Even if you lose this match against another human, uh, you get the rewards. So we'll probably just play a turn or two and then give them the win. Because we don't really need the uh, the victory rewards. Turn one, Swamp Skeleton. Always great battlefield control and value. It can keep coming back to your hand from the graveyard. Okay, fortunately this is a matchup that we win, so that's good. Uh, let's get our Coal Blade onto the field. We want that to start ramping up as soon as possible. He can lose his Charm Stray, or yeah, more likely he'll take the damage. Ooh, a second Charmed Stray. That's actually a little bit of an issue. So we certainly don't want to block that. Let's play a Swamp. We'll get a 2-1 creature onto the board we can block with. Let's go ahead and attack with the Skeleton. See what he chooses to do. We have a couple options here. If he blocks the stronger one, where he'll get value. Oh, he can't because it's tapped. So what we're going to do is this. He chooses not to block. We're going to destroy it anyways because we want to get Cold Blade going. Up to 2-2. Two, two. A little bit more chip damage in. Okay, next turn, our Skeleton Archer. Fortunately, when it enters the battlefield, deals one damage. That'll be a great way to take uh, take care of that fencing ace. And continue to buff our Cold Blade. Let's go ahead and do that. Boom! And if they want, they can trade with the Opportunist. Or, we can get all the damage in. I don't mind getting my uh, skeleton back. Eh, let's not give him the option. Even if there's a... Oh, there could be a tactical advantage in that hand. I wasn't thinking of that. Okay, that's fine. I like that trade. Destroys another creature. Cold Blade continues to buff. So he does have a lot of cards in his hand still. Something could be coming out. Yeah, that's not terrible. We really have control over this one. Okay, we'll attack with everything. See if we can bait into blocking the skeleton. He doesn't. Unlikely aid would have given us that kill anyway. Not a big deal, we're plenty strong. All right, so here anything except for the skeletons. So these two are strong enough to take the guardian out if he chooses to block. Um, and by what I, what I mean by that, of course, is we have unlikely aid, uh, which can step in for the kill. Right, so it makes sense to block the skeleton archer. Uh, but he's going to choose not to because he's expecting that I have something like that in my hand. And turn. Now we have the Vampire Opportunist with um, our like unlikely aid who can take out that Guardian if he chooses to attack with it. Okay, another Angel of Vitality. Not really a big deal. Doesn't change the situation. We're still winning the race in life. Choose 
choosing not to attack with the Guardians, so, uh, yeah. We could potentially win here, depending on how he plays this. Uh, but I do want to give him the game. If he blocks incorrectly, we win. And I'm not that interested in the victory. So thank you very much for joining me. Uh, this has been Magic the Budgeting, and hopefully I helped you with the challenges. I look forward to uh, seeing you in the next challenge if you're going through the progression.